We knew Trump's $83 million civil penalty in the E. Jean Carroll case would make the Trump deranged American left exceedingly happy. But few expected the behavior that we have seen over the last few days. This outrageous penalty, seven times more than E. Jean Carroll even wanted, and the reaction to it proved that Trump has driven the liberal elite in this country completely mad. It's not just derangement, it is pure obsession. Trump's biggest haters are seething every single day. They are seething over him. They hate a man they've likely never met more than their most intimate enemies. And on Monday, The View broadcast its first show since Friday evening and the news broke. The panel of four miserable left-wing women and one fake Republican entered the studio from which they broadcast their vapid, unrelatable show dancing to the theme song from The Apprentice. And then Whoopi Goldberg said this. We just walked out to the OJs for the love of money, which is the theme song of The Apprentice. And that's connected to the fact that you know who has to pay money, 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 money. So the producers, the cast, the audience fail to understand the impact of a display like that on the vast majority of Americans who don't suffer from their crippling affliction. Most Americans are not filled with an endless rage that'll only be satiated by bankrupting, imprisoning, or assailing the former president. In fact, most Americans are looking at the E. Jean Carroll case with concern. Donald Trump is not just a victim of a weaponized justice system inside our DOJ and dark blue major cities. Trump is now irrefutable proof of just how far the machine is willing to go to destroy its enemies. Even people who didn't vote for Trump or those who find him obnoxious or politically divisive can admit we've gone down a very dark road here. The fact that a woman without a credible story can just steal $83 million from a man because she happens to live in a place where that man is politically hated, well, that is just horrifying. New York's politicians changed the statute of limitation to allow E. Jean Carroll to legally steal tens of millions of dollars from a man that they hate. Pray they never hate you. It's also been alleged by the New York Post, the judge in this case mentored one of E. Jean Carroll's attorneys and actually officiated the wedding of the other, who was his former law clerk, something the attorney boasted of on her own resume. If you ever wanted to know how the legal system works in a place like Russia, now you know. Think about how much worse this could get and how fast it could happen. Last night, E. Jean Carroll and her two attorneys, who have such a wonderful relationship with the judge that helped them cruise to this massive exploitative victory, well, they all went on Rachel Maddow's show on MSNBC and bragged about their shocking win. Watch E. Jean Carroll respond when asked what she's going to do with all that money. And then ask yourself, does this look like a rape victim to you? Such, such great ideas <laughs> for all the good I'm going to do with this money. First thing, Rachel, you and I are going to go shopping. <laughs> We're going to get completely <laughs> new wardrobes, new shoes, motorcycle for Crowley, new fishing rod for Robbie. Rachel, what do you want? Penthouse? <laughs> it's yours, Nothing. Rachel. Penthouse and uh, France? You want France? You want to go fishing nope. in France? No? Oh. All right. All right. Okay. That's a joke. <laughs> So does that look like somebody who deserves $83 million for her pain and suffering? Or does that look like a grifting lunatic who's made rape allegations against seven different men throughout her bizarre and sex-obsessed life? Well, the correct answer is she's a victim. She's stunning and brave. Just nod your head and play along. You're expected to just accept what we just saw as normal. That's all fine. But it's not normal. None of this is normal. And tonight we're giving credit to investigative reporter Bernard Condon from the Associated Press, not a place you'd expect, for helping to prove how abnormal this whole moment is with Trump and all of this lawfare, as they call it. 
Condon analyzed Trump's civil fraud case in New York, where Tish James alleges Trump inflated his asset values in order to help get loans. Condon's investigation found it to be an incredible abuse of the legal system, saying that in 70 years, a penalty like the one sought against Trump, his businesses dissolved and these massive fines, they're asking for $370 million. Well, something anywhere even near this, well, something like this has never happened, but something at least even close to this has only happened 12 times in 70 years. Condon also says Trump's was the only business threatened with a shutdown without showing, without a showing of obvious victims and major losses. The only one in 70 years where they said we have to shut the business down even though we have no victims. Condon says businesses were taken over almost always as a last resort to stop a fraud in progress and to protect potential victims. And as you know, in the Trump case, the victims testified in this trial on Trump's behalf and said, we're not victims. We love the loans. We gave them to him. He paid them all back with interest. We made a fortune. He made a fortune. Everybody wins. This weaponization is glaring enough to get the attention of the Associated Press, and we know which way they lean. And that's the point. The point is that this is all way too obvious. We're watching the American left and the establishment celebrate as they work to destroy the most popular political candidate in the country right now, because they hate him. Destroying institutions we all depend on in the process, and they're too arrogant to understand the impact of all of this. They just gaslight us with ridiculous commentary like this. We've talked a lot on the show about how the institutions will start to break if Donald Trump is, is, is elected. One thing I, I want to say that I'm starting to feel a little bit better about things. I, a couple of months ago, I was terrified that Donald Trump was going to be next president. Donald Trump keeps losing. You know, I'm, I'm shifting to E.G. and Carroll for a second. We watch him lose $93 million. We're going to watch him lose a civil case. We're going to watch him lose an election fraud case. This country does not want our institutions to fail. I believe in our electorate, and I'm feeling a little bit better about things. Not that you really care what Donnie Deutsch thinks about anything. I'm not sure why you would. But that's the general narrative that you're getting. That's just an example. Typical nonsense that you can watch on MSNBC or really any cable channel. To E. Jean Carroll, to her attorneys, and to the billionaire who funded her ridiculous suit, to the establishment leftists who are weaponizing our Department of Justice, to the scores of partisan traitors who are tearing this country apart at the seams in order to protect some bureaucratic endeavor that they don't want Trump to dismantle, to all the beltway leeches and lobbyists mortified that Trump might deliver this government back to the people and minimize the power of their ill-gotten connections, there is a storm coming, and you hope that these people can realize that. The people arrogantly laughing on TV as they pervert and distort this country, this free country, for their own personal gain, are awakening a beast. We're seeing it happen every day. You're seeing moderates moving to the right. You're seeing a lot of people seeing the light. How many Joe Rogans and Bill Mars are there out there? Those are just the ones that we hear from. They will soon regret mocking half the nation, these people will, and destroying the functionality of the world's greatest country for political gain. The cancers of authoritarianism and leftism are very pervasive, but they can be caught and killed early before they destroy a society. I know we're all feeling like this is moving in a direction where we're going to lose the whole thing. That's how we all feel. It can be caught early. It's usually not, but it can be. That's exactly what's happening right now in Argentina with Javier Mille. Pray it happens here in November in this country, because four more years of this is likely not sustainable.